You remember we had Windows 10 and we yes. were looking at Hyper-V and how we could use it and the new features in order to deploy Ubuntu 18.04 on Windows. Right. We were so excited. Oh, we're still so excited. I mean, this is a great opportunity for uh, those of you who have never tried Linux to try it out mm -hmm. without any commitment and without having to reformat your computer and not have to risk losing anything because it's still, it's just running on Windows. Right. So you can bring it up. But Jeff, right at the end, we got it all set up. It's working great. It's going. Yeah. Woohoo. And then we try to log in and it's just like, we're going to call it the Hyper-V blue screen of death. It didn't do anything. And then it started doing this kind of log out, log in, log out, loop. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they haven't quite got it. And I uploaded the video anyways to YouTube in particular and, and thought, oh man, folks are going to come down on me so hard here because, you know, anytime I mess up a feature, they, they, you know, right on YouTube, it starts with the whole, oh, the why trolls. don't you guys test stuff before you do it? Why don't you, why because don't you we're do a live it? show. Because we're a live <laughs> show and I want me to experience the same problems that you yes. may experience. Because yeah. if I just figure it out beforehand and then I do it and it works perfectly because I already figured it out and I already worked everything right. out, then how, how are you going to figure it out if you get stuck? Exactly. So tonight, we're going to take it from where we left off and we're going to say, okay, hey, if that happened to you, if you got stuck with the Hyper-V blue screen of death, trademark 2018 <laughs> category 5. T-shirt, that. Yeah. <laughs> Then we're going to show you how to get past that tonight and get this thing up and going. All right. So I'm going to jump over to my laptop here. And this is right where we left it. So it, now this time, so you type Hyper-V. And you, we used Hyper-V Quick Create, the new feature in Windows 10, in order to create the virtual machine. But we've already done that. Now, because it's already created, we're going to bring up Hyper-V Manager. This allows us to access already running, already created uh, virtual machines. Now, you can see that it's running in the background. So if you've noticed since doing this that, oh, why is my CPU being used? Why is there some RAM being used? It might actually still be running. So don't forget to shut it down, just like you would a normal computer, because otherwise it is using resources on your computer. But it's running right now, and I'm going to connect. And Jeff, I'm going to show you and the community what, is, uh, what was happening here. So let's connect. I made it full screen. There we go. Works great, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Login. Robbie. Password. Test. Test. One, one two, two three. three. Ready for it? Hit Enter in three, two, one, go. Go. Keep going. Go. <laughs> OK, is it not going to mess up this time? Yeah. You okay. tell me, Jeff. Or is this the blue screen? That's the Hyper-V blue screen of death. Oh, uh, gotcha. I'm expecting like error code, but I oh, see. So nothing happens. It doesn't work again. Another right. show ruined. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's fix it, shall we? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this. Because remember, I'm not actually closing the virtual machine. I'm closing the connection to it. It's like remote desktop okay. into a virtual machine. Now, I'm going to tell you what the problem is first. Thank you. Okay. The problem is during setup, I chose to have my user account automatically log in. If you haven't oh, deployed okay. your virtual appliance yet, when you see that prompt, when you get to that point, when you're setting up the user account, do not check that box. If you leave it set to off, it will work out of the box. Right. Okay. So that... Really? happens to be the problem. For those of you who have set it up already and you're, you're trapped out of your machine, we're going to show you how to do that tonight. I want to back up just really, really quickly and talk really briefly about how we came about it. Now, this was a real community effort over the past week because we had to figure out how do we fix this so we can show the viewers. Um, it started with, uh, with Marshman installing several copies of this on his Windows 10 machine and got some of them working and some of them not working and why is and and trying to get what's the difference in the process right. why did one work and one didn't and then C128D also ran some tests they got it working but only if you turned off enhanced session mode right. but that was crippling to the to the responsiveness it was like slow and the whole idea here the, the reason we're so excited about this feature in Hyper-V is because it has enhanced session mode aka well, or via XRDP. That's what is making this so exciting. Right. Mm -hmm. You could always install Ubuntu on Hyper-V, but it always did not have 
enhanced session mode. So by turning it off, C120AD was able to get it to run and able to log in, and it worked just fine, but it was really... Which is so no good. encountered that, that's pretty miserable. Yeah. But then Chris Whalen on YouTube made the connection and said, I think it's because of the automatic login. I created one, and I made sure not to check off, automatically log in, and it works. Because everything else With was done the same. session mode. Everything else was done the same, but just not checking off that box. Okay. Right. So then I took kind of the accumulated knowledge that we all learned together and packaged it up into this video that is happening right now live, and I'm going to show you how to fix this. So first of all, I'm going to connect to that machine by right-clicking and hitting Connect. Then we're going to, I mean, you can make it full screen, you can do whatever. Right now, I just want to connect, so just connect. And we're going to look at what both C128D and Marshman kind of alluded to and, and kind of pointed toward, which is that enhanced session mode. So wait for it, because right now it's grayed out. I have to wait for it to try to connect. So let's see if it connects. And in this, in this um, with this problem, sometimes you have trouble connecting. So that screen, you see that XRDP? This login screen, it doesn't look like the traditional Ubuntu login, right? That's because this is powered by XRDP, which gives us the enhanced session mode. So based on what I learned from C128D and Marshman, we need to turn off enhanced session. But Robbie, that's going to kill your performance. Yes, it is. However, now I can log in just like normal. Watch this. Test, test, one, two, three. I'm oh. in. I can close Whoa. out or whatever, right? Okay, I'm in. Huh. So now, activities, just type the word user. And you're going to see, let's see, users. Wait for it. Try again, users. Is it account maybe? Let's try account details. Nope, that's not what I want. Wait for it. It's really, it is really laggy when you're, when you're running without that. So much for that accumulated knowledge, huh? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> is it a capital U? No. Oh, user accounts. Ironically, when I typed login as the search, I get user accounts. Let's oh. let, so that's what we're looking for, user accounts. Okay. Huh. So it comes up if you type the full thing. Maybe it's just truncating the list when I type user. Maybe there's too many and it's dropping off the bottom. So type user space accounts, and that will definitely get you there. Okay, click on it. No, nope, that's not the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the one. Oh, Ubuntu, I hate when you do that kind of thing. No, account details. No, that's not what I want. User. Users. Come on now. <laughs> what are you two laughing at? It's not an ideal out-of-the-box situation here, folks. No. No. <laughs> what happens when I click account details? Why does it want me to install something? Is it because you turned Change something off? No, I didn't turn anything off. Should I install that, Jeff? Maybe it doesn't have the right thing installed? No. I can't see you not being able to Oftentimes manage your Oftentimes I just press accounts. okay on things. I'm going to try it, folks. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try install, like just letting it install that. Maybe there's something missing. So oh, C120 the AD says you want account details. So my guess is you have to install it. It doesn't look like it comes with the virtual machine. Maybe it's a stripped down version of Ubuntu and it's just not there. Ah. Solving wonders about running the GUI command in terminal. Or does that. Hmm. What is the, the command that you're asking about? He, he just said, what about running the GUI command in a terminal? What's the GUI command we're looking for? I have no clue. <laughs> I'm just reading off the Discord chat. <laughs> well, let's let this install, folks. This is the account details that it keeps taking me to. I, right. I'm surprised that it's not already there, though. That's not wrong, because... Users. Huh. Well, isn't it good we have a whole hour? Right. Well, let's see. let's see what else. Robbie yeah. Ferguson. What happens when I click on Robbie Ferguson? Account settings. And it takes... No, there it is. Huh. Okay, so try. Oh, okay, so what, folks. So, what'd you do? So, see, so it's not the account details. 
Yeah. So I found a little bit of a, a way to get to it without doing the search. So I can actually, can I cancel this? No, it doesn't even let me cancel it. I'm just going to X out of that. So the way that I did find it, this is hacky. And, and again, for those who would, I wish I could just, can I just close this window? Just leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> again, I take the approach with our show that I want to, I want to encounter these problems because right. I want, I want yeah. to figure it out with you. Okay, so I'm going to click here. See that little drop-down arrow at the top right? And I click on my name. Then I can click on account settings, and it does take me there. That's where I want to be. That's what I was looking for. Users, hello. Okay, click on unlock up at the top right. And it asked me for my password. This is the one that I created. And now I can turn off automatic login. So keep in mind, I had to unlock first. Remember, that was inaccessible while this was a locked application. Now that I unlocked it and entered my root password, I can turn off automatic login. Okay. Close this window. Now. Oh, great. Account details is installed. That's useful. <laughs> All right, so now that that's done, now I'm going to change, I'm going to restore this window so that it is now not full screen. And I'm going to click on that arrow again, and I'm going to hit the power button. And no, I'm not going to hit the power button. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my name, Robbie Ferguson, log out. Now, log out. Wait for it. <laughs> Okay, All now right. we're back at the traditional login. Ubuntu yeah. login screen. Kay. It's been a roundabout time getting here. <laughs> but we got here, Sasha. But Sancho. we're here. We're here. We it's the, the adventure that counts. We took Absolutely. to the yeah. login screen. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so now that we're at this screen, so we have logged out of the Ubuntu machine right. in the normal mode, not enhanced mode. Now I'm going to go view and turn back on enhanced session. Now I'm back here. Oh. Okay. So, maximize that. And are we ready? Ravi, test, test, one, two, three. And Sasha's crossing her fingers. Jeff, come on. <laughs> and hit enter. And ladies and gentlemen, lo and behold, we have purple. <laughs> yes! And we're in! Yes! Yahoo! Good time! And the crowd and goes wild. Yeah. Now, we're going to have much better responsiveness because we've got XRDP enhanced uh, session mode running out of the box. Now I can shut down, I can reboot, I can re-log in with that enhanced session mode, and it's going to work. Yes. <laughs> so I want to see what this is all about, just like we had planned last week. I want to see what it's all about. So we're going to take a really quick break. When we come back, we're going to take a quick tour of Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu 18.04.1 running on Windows 10 right after this. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners and thank you for watching. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We've got it working. Ubuntu 18.04.1 is running on Microsoft Windows 10. Now, just to reiterate, this is actually a window on Microsoft Windows 10 using Hyper-V Manager. And that was installed on Episode 575. So if you want the step-by-step -step on how to install it, go back to Episode 575 of Category 5 Technology TV. But watch what, what you find here when you go Hyper-V Quick Create on Windows 10 with the Fall Creators update. Uh, and in there, you're going to now see the ability to deploy Ubuntu 18.04.1. And it's going to work for you right out of the box with all of the information that you've learned here today. Sasha, why are you laughing? 
I'm in Discord, sorry. Right. And you're not allowed to. Oh, it's not related? No. Oh, no. <laughs> you're not allowed to. It's going to work out of the box. And just <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Turns out that you get in trouble if you use capital letters. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> oh, did you get reprimanded by the bot? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Third time you get banned for 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Sorry. Back to okay, so work. here it is. It's Ubuntu running on Windows. So if you're a Windows mm -hmm. user and you don't want to wipe your hard drive and lose everything that you've already got set up, this is a great way to test it out. You can try Linux. It's absolutely free, and because you're doing it through Hyper-V, you're just installing it as an application on your computer, and you don't have to wipe anything out or dual boot or set up anything difficult. So let's get a quick look. And a quick look it is. So we've got Firefox, we've got Thunderbird, which is mail, kind of similar to Outlook mm -hmm. Express back in the day. We've got our file browser, we've got Rhythmbox, it's kind of like an iTunes-like thing. LibreOffice Writer, which we've looked at here on the show, software for installations, help. Amazon and Initial Setup, which is this screen here, which probably walks me through some of the things that I've skipped over. You'll want to go through that. Right. I just find it like it's a big window on my screen taking up space. Okay, so click on this guy down here. You're going to see all the applications that come pre-installed. It's pretty. Yeah, and remember that this is built kind of for touchscreen. So if I drag um, with my mouse, I'm actually going to be able to move things around just like you were on a tablet, like on Android or something like that. You can see that it looks like it's got support for Bluetooth and things. Uh, Firefox, let's bring it up and see what, uh, what it looks like. I mean, it's, it's going to be what you expect, right? There's Firefox. Mm-hmm. Jump over to YouTube. So excited. It runs. So the nice thing about doing this is you can do your web surfing. We talked about, Sasha, we talked about um, uh, getting ROMs mm -hmm. and things like that. And people saying, well, I don't have Linux. I can't install Linux. How can I do this safely? Because it's, there are a lot of malicious malware and things mm -hmm. that you can catch from those kinds of things. You can do it on here. Yeah, that's true. In a virtual machine, it's Linux. Exactly. And it's not going to infiltrate your Windows file system, so that's a Perfect. good thing, right? Uh, so here we are on YouTube. Let's do a quick search for Category 5. We're just kind of posing there for Discord. Sorry, it sounded quiet there for a moment. Okay, so there's Category 5 Technology TV. And there we are. And there it goes. And it's working. And it's playing right out of the box. All right, so that's Firefox. We know all about that. It's got Writer. So I imagine that means if I click here and type Calc, it's got LibreOffice Calc, so which is your... Oh, uh, yeah. And this is a new version, too. Look at this. So there's your kind of Excel spreadsheets and things, but it's absolutely free. Version 6.0.3.2. I don't know if that version was out yet. Yeah, They'd there have to it update is. at home. Yeah. So there, there you have it, folks. So it's up and running. It's Ubuntu Linux in Microsoft Windows. Which is perfect. You're going to do this at home? I can home? do this at home. You're going to do this at home? Do I've, got, I've at home? got dual boot at home. Oh, well, there oh, you go. You I don't need to do this. this. I like, have I'm Windows 10 right now at home, but now I can do this. You've yes. got Windows 10. You're stuck on Windows 10. You want Win, uh, I, Linux. We started with Linux. We to switched it. to Windows 10 for games, mm. and now we can do this. So there are a couple of quirks out of the box. We have found that. I mean, this is a project that is officially endorsed by both Canonical Ubuntu and Microsoft. Microsoft worked with the open source community to make this work. And it's not perfect right out of the box because of that one little quirk. Don't check off automatically log in. And if you do that, you leave it off, you're going to be good to go. So enjoy. That's Ubuntu 18.04.1 running on Windows 10 through Hyper-V.